ان الحمد لله نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويلكم تو قران بيج ا دي توداي ان شاء الله وي ويل بي كولكتينج جيمز فروم سوره العصر ويتش از سوره نمبر 103 ان ذا نوبل قران سوره العصر از ا مكي سوره ذا ورد العصر مينز ذا ديكلاينينج دي This surah has three verses and this was revealed during the period 610 to 615 AD. The revelation background of this surah is that the Meccans had not liked the fact that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam was preaching the message of Islam. They made every attempt to ensure that they can put all efforts of the prophet down and used to call him names and tried to humiliate him not just by words but also by their actions it is said that the pagan makkans used to say muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam is a loser thus this surah was revealed by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a response to those claims it is a concise but comprehensive surah which in three verses outlines a complete way of human life based on the islamic world view some of the virtues of surah al-asr are sayyidan Sayyidina Ubaidullah ibn Hisn um, said that whenever two companions of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam would meet they would not part company until one of them had recited surah al-asr in its entirety to the other some of the quotes uh, from Imam al-Shafi include if people were to ponder on this chapter it would amaze them if this was the only chapter sent to humanity it would suffice them and people are negligent of this chapter the theme of the surah is man's lost state and qualities of those who are not lost now let's find out what is in surah al-asr the word al-asr is derived from the very first verse of the surah wal-asr allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by time Linguistically, asr derives from the verb asara meaning to squeeze and thus relates to time that is declining or fading very quickly. Time is one of the most scarce resources. When time is gone, it is gone forever and it cannot be reversed. When time it is when time is gone that sometimes a person will realize that they have not fulfilled their duties or have not achieved what they could have achieved. And the time of the asr salah is also when the day is declining and is nearing its completion so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us of this time in the second verse allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about someone being in a state of loss who is that someone it is mankind it is you and me man will lose the capital of his existence hours days months and years of life pass quickly spiritual and material potentialities decline and abilities fade away man is like a person who possesses great capital and without his permission and will every day a portion of that capital is taken away this is the nature of life in this world and the nature of continual loss it is said your life comprises a few breaths that can be counted when one of them is sent out a part of your life has diminished allah has granted man the invaluable capital of his life so that he may invest it in profitable business venture if he invests his capital of life sensibly in good works there will be no limit to the profitable returns but if he invests it unwisely in evil works then let alone attracting profitable returns he will even lose his capital since time is man's capital of life the man himself is the trader under normal circumstances his capital is not a frozen thing that may be kept for a while and used up later when the need arises the capital is fluid or flowing all the time every minute and every second the man who invests it needs to be very wise intelligent and agile so that he is able to swiftly and readily reap the profit from a flowing capital the objectives in life are not about fulfilling our wishes enjoying games visiting beautiful places or leading a peaceful life people will be at loss because they would did not do good deeds that would make them successful in the hereafter 
they would have neglected their duties towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the third verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the conditions for success. What are those conditions? The first condition is to believe. Believe in Allah, believe in the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent. Believe in the five pillars of Islam and the six pillars of Iman. The second condition for success is to do righteous deeds. To do deeds that are going to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now these two conditions are at a personal level. There are two more conditions which are more at a level beyond our personal level. The third condition for success is calling to truth. This is calling to do the things which are just and one should always seek the truth. The fourth condition is calling to patience, calling people to be patient in whatever they go through. Now we need to remember that when someone wants to bake a cake, they have to put in the proper ingredients with the proper mix. If the recipe is off by even one ingredient, the cake will not turn out to be as it was intended. Similarly, these four qualities are like the ingredients for success. If even one ingredient is missing, success will not be achieved. Similarly, if someone has just one or some of these qualities but not all, then they cannot expect to get the success that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to have. Now it's time for a self-check, time to ask ourselves some questions that we need to answer truthfully on our own. Do I consciously know that every passing minute brings me closer to death? Do I firmly believe and follow the five pillars of Islam and the six pillars of Iman? Do I do righteous deeds only for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do I follow truth and invite others to it? Am I patient and do I invite others to it? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to fulfill the rights of the Quran. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.